Hello and welcome. I'm Gustavo Tolosa. I am a whole food plant-based um, coach and webinar host and producer. And um, I am also a doctor in music and I'm a college university professor, but uh, one of my passions is, uh, besides music, is um, healthy eating, whole food plant-based because I see it um, every day I see how, how it impacts people's lives. So just a little bit of while we wait for everybody to log in, um, I just want you to, um, to know that uh, you can subscribe to my email list by going to the website plantemes.com and clicking on subscribe. I don't send uh, I won't be flooding your your inbox. I don't sell. I don't. Uh, I don't sell my email list, and I don't send a lot of emails either. And uh, sometimes once a week, or sometimes even less. Um, please also visit my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed to it. It's under Gustavo Tolosa. Please remember to turn off your camera and your microphone for now we will we will turn it on later that because i'm recording this meeting so if you don't mind turning off your camera and your microphone and also you can follow me in facebook under dr starch and uh instagram plantemis and you can also visit the um the website like i told like i just mentioned just uh this i i have been very um lucky very blessed to have met these people that you see here i'm not showing this to to show off i'm only i just want you to know that what i'm going to do today is share with you what i have learned from these wonderful people and many more in in the last nine years um just so that you know that it's true some people who don't know know me may think well i'm it's not true yes i have gone through the uh, start solution training and it, and it, it was a wonderful it was wonderful to learn from dr mcdougall okay so today we're talking about meal ideas um i did a whole um session of this um, um i do a, once a month a seven day detox and reset program and uh, we talk about meal ideas and not recipes um, I just, I love cooking. I love recipes. I collect thousands of recipes. I like from time to time to do more uh, elaborate recipes, but I, on a daily basis, I just use very few ingredients. And I find that some people get discouraged because they see these recipes with long list of ingredients and eating whole food plant-based is easy and it's inexpensive. Just as I, as I said earlier, I am not a medical doctor. I am a doctor in music, but I'm not going to be giving you medical advice. Um, I would get paper and pen if you would like to write some of these meal ideas. I will not be emailing recipes because this is the whole point of doing this webinar is to get away from recipes and just doing very easy meal ideas. Um, when you go to my YouTube channel, what can you find? Well, um, you're going to find cooking demos of these easy meals. You're going to find some that are more elaborate. You are going to find book clubs that have been recorded and are extremely helpful. You're going to find the fun uh, series that is called 58 Questions With, and you're going to see Dr. McDougall, Dr. Lyle, Chef AJ, Dr. Goldhammer, and it's a, those are fun interviews. You're going to see a lot of other interviews with celebrity doctors and chefs and mental health professionals. So please, it, it's free. I want you to know it's free and it's available to you. And of course, you're going to see some of my music videos as well. And if you um, are taking any kind of medication, please always consult with your doctor if you're going to change your diet because food is very powerful and medications sometimes, if not most of the times have to be adjusted. So 
make sure that um, th that you're in contact with your health professional. Um, I do want to mention something that I did mention in my last seven day detox program, I believe, and it's very important that, that you um, understand this, that every extra pound that we carry, every extra pound that we carry decreases the immune system, decreases our immune system and decreases our lung capacity. So uh, also every extra pound that you carry increases the inflammation levels in your body, which is a risk factor for just about every disease out there. So is it easy to lose weight? No, it's not really easy. I mean, there is an easier way and I'm about to show you, but if it was easy, everybody would be slim and healthy and that's not the case. There is an epidemic of, of major proportions going on with cancer and diabetes and heart disease. So it isn't easy. Uh, it takes some work to lose weight. It takes some, um, you have to uh, you know, do some habit changing, but losing weight is easier than being hospitalized and hooked to machines. And, and uh, it's definitely easier than, than being dead. That is, if you want to, if you still want to live. So, um, and, it's, and it's easier than just waiting for something bad to happen to you and then taking action. So um, what are we going to do? Um, okay, so here are some ideas. I wrote them down so that I would not forget any. We go over this in detail in the seven day program that I do. And if you're interested, I'll talk about it later at the end. So I'm going to um, address the three uh, main meals, I guess, of the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And of course, there could be snacks. In the seven-day program that I, that I run, that is a detox program and reset program, we learn that one of the things we learn is that we need to eat when we're hungry, not when we're told. Not because it's eight in the morning, I must eat breakfast. If you're not hungry, don't eat. It's, the body is wise. So that's one of the very important, I'm going to be giving you some really good info here. So not just, the, not just this meal ideas, but things that I think can make a difference. And one of the, those things is um, that, that we eat when we're hungry. The other thing that we learn in the seven day program is that um, uh, we're always one bite away from from getting back on, on track. One meal away from getting back on the wagon, there's no point in beating ourselves up if we ever fall off the wagon. I am human, just like you, and every now and then there are weak moments. We just have to know that we don't throw everything uh, away and we just go crazy. No, it's just the next bite I take, I get back on. So here are some of the ideas, okay. For breakfast, um, one of the things that is a staple for us uh, whole food, plant-based and starch center uh, eaters is oats. Um, make sure that you get the oats that have the most fiber. Why? Because fiber is fiber and water combined gives a uh, produce bulk and that fills us up so that we're not starving. And one of the important things of fiber, as we learn in the seven day detox program, is that is the most efficient way to detoxify our body. Fiber takes all those um, toxins out of our body. So if you can use, um, if you can use the groats, oats, that's the best. What is that? Well, that's the grain as it comes out basically of the plant. It looks like rice. 
Now, what the, what would be the next that it would be the next level of processing? Well, that would be steel cuts, steel cut oats. What will be the next? Well, that would be just um, you know regular oats. And but please try to avoid the the quick cooking ones because then the fiber has been broken um, a lot. So of course it's better than than eating something unhealthy. But we want to try to eat whole food as close to whole as possible. So whether you use oat, I mean groats or steel cuts or you know the regular oats. Um, what is a meal, a, a simple meal? Well, you boil that in water. I do it in water. Um, for I usually do one cup of oats and two or two and a half cups of water. I, I know that I won't eat all of that probably, but I always like to make extra so that I have it for snack or any other time of the day when if I get hungry. I always make more. That's the other thing we learn in the seven day program that I run. They always make more because you want to have available food in your refrigerator whenever it's needed and you don't have to start making something. So you make the oats. Usually if you use a growth um, and you have an instant pot, it's going to take seven to nine minutes. Uh, you have to try it and see that not all growth oats are the same. So you can also look in the in in the directions of your instant pot and see how long they say to put it in. And if you do it in the stove until it's um, until it's uh, soft. So you cook your oatmeal whatever way you like. I like to cook it in water. You can also put some cinnamon, and then you add as much fruit as you want. I like antioxidants like blueberries, blackberries, any kind of berries. I like to pile that up on the oatmeal. I also like to put slices of a banana, like a whole banana, um, because that's the sugar for me. It's totally natural sugar. It comes with the fiber and with the water. I don't have to worry about it, but it's not processed sugar. And then I sometimes I also chop um, apple, an apple or um, peaches or any fruit that you like. Now, what is one of my favorite way for oats? Well, in I use the instant pot a lot. You don't have to. You can always do it in the on, on the stove. But this is what I do. Okay, so I put that one cup of oats. I puree with a with a fork two bananas preferably re, pretty ripe bananas so that it's sweet so i get two bananas i peel them and i make puree i mash them okay with the fork and so i put the one cup of oats i put about two and a half to three cups of water. It, this depends on how watery or creamy you like it, okay? You, you will decide later once you start trying. I put um, like a fourth of a teaspoon or even a half teaspoon of cinnamon, depending on how much you like it. I also put about a half teaspoon of vanilla and then I put the mashed bananas. I also chop a sweet apple, I mean, pretty small, you know, I chop it and I throw it in there. And this is optional, but if you um, want to add a little more sweetness, you probably want to add two or three or four dates chopped or in big chunks, but without the, the pit. And uh, you close your instant pot and you set it for about eight, I do it about eight minutes but uh, it will depend, you know, I don't think more than 10 minutes. And uh, this is delicious, absolutely delicious. A simple, quick meal while you're doing other things in the house in, in the morning, maybe you're, uh, I mean, I've set the Instant Pot and I can go take a shower. You can, you know, you can make, put your makeup or do your hair or whatever, that you, or check email. And um, another option for 
breakfast that is easy, that is savory, is you put the oats, just like I mentioned, the cup, one cup of, of oats, two, two and a half, even three, depending on how much you want water, you want it water. And then you put um, like one small tomato chopped, you put two cups of mushrooms. This is what makes it really savory. Mushrooms chopped. You put four or five tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Um, let's see what else do I put because this one has just a few more ingredients, but it's just delicious. Um, I put um, like half cup of green onions. Um, I put a cup of red bell peppers and then I add things like turmeric. I like to add turmeric to just about everything because turmeric is a wonderful anti-inflammatory. And then if you want to add like one teaspoon of garlic powder and onion powder, that's, that's up to you. While this is cooking here on the side, I have chopped spinach or chopped kale or chopped Swiss chard, some kind of green to help also clean my uh, or and keep the arteries in good health. So I just gave you there two pretty quick and easy ways to make oats. What is another breakfast that is easy to make and is my favorite? Well, hash browns. I buy frozen hash browns, make sure that you look at the label and that it has no oil. Yes, nowadays you can find quite a few brands of hash browns that have no oil. You might have to go to a few supermarkets to find them, or you might even have to do it yourself and grate the, uh, the potatoes or even uh, chop the potatoes in little cubes, okay? Um, but what do I do? Well. I have a very good nonstick skillet. And uh, I put the, the hash browns there on a hot pan. It needs to be hot and it needs to be a very good nonstick pan. And then on top, I add chopped peppers and onions. And you can also buy them frozen at the store. So to save you time, or you can chop your own. And I just kind of covered the top with the peppers and the onions, and I let it stay there for a good five minutes, six minutes. You need to barely touch it with a with a spatula, and uh, don't worry about it being um, burned because they will probably not burn because the starch will make it easy to unstick it. And sometimes when I, um, uh, when I lift it, the whole thing lifts like a pancake and I just turn it over. So that's one of my most favorite breakfasts, the hash browns with the onions and the peppers. And I usually have a side of steamed broccoli. I try to eat greens in every meal because of heart health. So um, there you have it two ways to make oats, uh, hash browns and with, with some green on the side. And um, what would be one more? Well, one more would be steamed veggies, for example. Uh, steamed veggies is great or even roasted vegetables. And I'm going to share here my um, screen and uh, just review a little bit. Okay, why do we want water and fiber so much? Water and fiber really is magic. And um, the more water, the less calories. You take water out and the calorie density goes up exponentially. That's why we want to try to eat uh, veggies uh, as much as possible um, without getting the water out or the fiber. A few words of wisdom. Clean your environment 
and if possible, find family support or friend support. Of course, in the seven day program that I ran, we have a wonderful group um, and we support each other and it makes a big difference. Eat only when you're hungry. Try at all costs to stop eating at 6 p.m. But you know what? If you, if you can't, it's not gonna be the end of the world, but just try to not do any late night eating. Chew your food, avoid drinking calories because the fiber is broken up and we get you know, the detox part of it and the bulk part of it is not as good. Um, it's also easier to drink calories than to chew them. So remember to take your B12, um, add chia and flax seeds to your oats, one or two tablespoons, um, and or even to salads. And um, I like to add turmeric for anti-inflammatory uh, to my food. And remember, one of the things that we really learn in the seven day detox program is that we stay away from making exceptions like, oh, well, that it's just today, it's just a little bit because exceptions many times, if not always, eventually become the rule. Some of you have told me, uh, share with me in the seven day program, how you notice how you sabotage yourself. I have noticed in the past as well, how sometimes you, oh, I'm going to buy this for my whatever daughter, for my husband, for my wife. Um, I'm going to make this for them when in fact, the one that's going to be eating it is you. So uh, be aware of that. Another wonderful idea that we uh, try in the seven day detox and, and reset program is um, we do a day of veggies and fruit. Um, we sometimes we do a whole day of veggies and a whole day of fruit. And then we follow up that with a 24 hour fast. We do go more in detail about fasting, and this is not about fasting, so we're not going to do that here. And um, anyway, if you want to try that that detox, um, let me know. Okay, send me an email. I log in three times a day. It's kind of like a reality show. You, I log in for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I show you what I'm eating and how I make it, what I'm going to make, etc. So this is your savior here. As far as I'm concerned, sweet potatoes is the most powerful food on the planet because it really kills your um, uh, cravings. It really has so much fiber and uh, they taste so good. We have so many types of sweet potatoes and um, they just, you will see your pounds shed off when you start eating sweet potatoes. There are many ways to prepare them. So you, and there are so many types that you will not get bored. So these are some of the meals that I, I want you to see that at the, at, at the bottom right, you can see my roasted veggies. And there are peppers, onions, Brussels sprouts, um, mushrooms, uh, zucchini, any kind of vegetable that you like, you can put it in a pan and roast it. Roast it means at high, high heat. Um, you also have up there on the screen, my um, one kind of uh, hash browns. These are the little cubed ones with onions and peppers. My uh, lentil, uh, my green uh, split pea soup, mashed potatoes. We love mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes, also with a little bit of butternut squash and sauteed, um, that sauteed um, Swiss chard with onions. And then the oatmeal right there, those are groats, okay, where I have put a lot of fruit on top. So these are the breakfasts that I just share with you. And, um, oops, hold on. Let me go back. Okay, so 
And those are easy, easy, easy. Uh, you can steam or roast any veggies. They can be, I would always add some starch, a potato or sweet potato, but it could be any. If you eat non-starchy vegetables, then you can eat a lot of them. And basically you are eating almost, I mean, a, a very insignificant amount of calories and you're ingesting so much uh, fiber and water. Okay, now what about lunches and dinners? Well, here we go. Mashed potatoes with steamed or roasted vegetables on the side. Use any kind of spices that you like and want. And um, uh, that is simple and eat as much as you want of that. Baked potatoes with Mexican salsa on top and then corn on the cob. Another simple meal and very, very satisfying. Layer potato, onion, garlic, pepper, casserole. This is a classic. I'm giving you this, uh, this secret recipe here because it's amazing, okay? And it's easy. So what do you do? Well, you peel your potatoes. How many? Well, it will depend on how big your pot is. You need either a, a clay pot or a regular pot or the instant pot. And what you're going to do, I would get at least, um, this is so good that you want to make a lot of it because you will eat it, believe me for lunch and dinner and breakfast, um, maybe six potatoes, okay? And you're going to slice them and round it like that and kind of thick. We go over this in detail uh, in the seven day program, but it's easy to do. So I'm telling you, you just, you just slice them. You also slice the onions so that they're circled. Um, how many onions? A lot. You will need a lot of onions for this. Um, so if you have six large potatoes, you're going to need at least four, okay? Garlic, a whole head, a whole, I mean, the whole uh, head of garlic um, peeled, of course. You don't have to chop it, you just peel it. And then get, um, this is optional, but it's, it tastes really good, red one, large red bell pepper. You're going to get the seeds out, of course, and then you're going to slice it. Everything is sliced. And then you're going to do layers. So you're going to start with a layer of potatoes and cover the whole thing. Um, you're going to use about half a cup, if you're using the Instant Pot, half a cup of water at the bottom. You're going to put a layer of potatoes, then you follow it with the layers of onions, then another layer of potatoes, then another layer of garlic only, then another layer of potatoes, a layer of the red bell peppers. Then if you have onions, which you should, you do a layer of onions um, and then another layer of potatoes. Then on top of everything, you chop as much parsley as you want, if you like parsley, and you put it there, you close the instant pot and um, you put it, uh, on even steam, okay, for like mm, seven to eight minutes. And uh, it's done. If you use the regular stove, you might want to put one cup of liquid at the bottom and you put it on low and it may take an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. You will cover your pot with the lid. You will smell the it's gonna smell wonderful. And it's basically layers of these four ingredients. And it's just delicious. You don't want it to be too soft because you don't want it to be a soup. You wanna scoop it out and be solid. That's the layered casserole or stew, like I call it. Another idea, a baked sweet potato. Baked sweet potato with broccoli is like the match made in heaven to me. They go so well together 
and you can eat as much of these two things that you want because uh, it's pure water and fiber and nutrients. A burrito bowl is another wonderful idea. You just cook rice. I like to cook the rice with chopped cilantro in it. So you cook the rice according to the directions. Um, you get beans in a can uh, or you make your own beans, whichever bean you want, black beans or, or kidney beans, whatever beans. Uh, you chopped tomatoes, you slice or chopped lettuce. Um, and then I like to saute, but in a pan, I put two or three onions sliced and I slice red, green, and um, yellow peppers. I put one or even two of each and I so dry saute and it's like fajita, wonderful mixture. And you pile it up in this burrito bowl. Absolutely delicious. Make sure you make a lot of it because you're going to eat it um, over and over. Uh, chopping <laughs> with Chopin. You know, I'm a pianist and I love to play Chopin. So this, I call this soup like that because I was playing Chopin uh, for, a, for a recital that I was giving. And um, I was listening to Chopin while I was making, inventing this soup. And it was just delicious. What is this soup? Well, here we go. One can of black beans, but it could be any bean. One can of uh, chickpeas, okay? Um, one can of diced tomatoes. I put some onions. You can use two onions, one onion, three onions, chopped. Um, I, have, I had cooked spinach. It was about a cup. I threw it in there also. I love mushrooms, so I put a cup of sliced mushrooms. Um, I also like zucchini. So I put um, zucchini cut in chunks. And then I added 10 cups of water, okay? Or vegetable broth, if you prefer. I didn't put a lot of spices. I put like a teaspoon or maybe two teaspoons of dry oregano or thyme. And um, I put like a two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, but you can leave that out. And I did put, because I told you I put turmeric and not just about everything. I put like a fourth teaspoon of turmeric. And what I did, I put all that in the Instant Pot. I pushed the soup button um, and I let it go for a, uh, when once it gathered the uh, pressure for about 10 minutes. And it was truly one of the best soups I've ever made and had. And you can also cook it on the stove. It'll probably take you a little longer. Maybe it'll take you 45 minutes. So that's what that soup is. The orange soup is a soup that my mother came up with. And she told me that she makes this. Uh, it's orange because everything in it is orange. So what does she do? Well, she uses one cup of each of these things. A cup of butternut squash, you can cut it in small pieces. Um, a cup of any other orange squash, like kabocha or any other squash that you like. Um, a cup of chopped carrots. And then two kinds of sweet potatoes, a cup of each. So that's five things right there. But then she adds a six cup of one of her favorites of those. So if your favorite is butternut squash, add another cup of that. So it's six cups in all. And then you will add um, eight to 10 cups of water or vegetable broth, depending on whether you want it creamier or less creamier and you cook it in the instant pot for about 10 minutes or on the stove until it's all cooked. And then with an immersion blender, you blend it and it truly is delicious. You can add any spices that you like or no spices at all. Um, this is a blend that we do for fasting and it has two ingredients. 
It has kabocha squash or any other squash you can find, but kabocha is preferable and zucchini. That's it. Kabocha, squash, and zucchini and, uh, and water. Yeah. So uh, I, I buy a kabocha squash big enough to fit in the instant pot that I have and um, I cook it. That's the, that's the only thing you have to do. You have to cook it first with like an, a half a cup of water. And it does take a good 25 minutes because the outside is very hard. So you let it cool. Once it's cool, you take it out, you cut it in half and you scoop out the seeds and the stringy part. And you can use the whole thing or you can use just the flesh of it or you can use uh, um, part of the skin if you want. This is all up to you. You put all of that back in the instant pot. I like to put five, sometimes six zucchinis, just sliced, just those two things, throw it in there. And also add about eight cups of water, okay? And you set the instant pot for four minutes because the only thing that has to cook is the zucchini and that cooks really fast. OK, so when it's done, you release the pressure with a immersion blender. You blend it and it's a wonderful, wonderful blend. We use this as um, as a way to do the fasting if you cannot do a water fast. If you want to enhance it a little, then you will have added like a small onion uh, when you um, when you were cooking it um, for those five, four or five minutes. Lunches and dinners. Also, we're continuing with lunches and dinner. Uh, very simple, rice and kidney beans with a side of greens. You can buy the rice already, already cooked in the, at the supermarket if you don't wanna do it. You can buy the kidney beans in a can, hopefully no salt. And then all you have to do is find some kind of greens and, so, and um, either saute it or steam it. Rice and veggies, I like basmati rice or brown rice or white rice or any type of rice. What I do is I put a bunch of veggies in the instant pot and I saute it for like five minutes. What do I use? Pretty much whatever I have in the refrigerator. Um, it, I, I usually, I always have onions and, gar onions and garlic at home. So I chop like an onion or two at the most and several garlic cloves um, chopped. I throw it in there with like half a cup of water and in with the saute function of the instant pot. And then I put, I chopped some red bell peppers and green bell peppers and um, what else? Um, I, um, I, I carrots, I chop carrots. I like mushrooms, so I chopped some mushrooms. Um, I like green onions, so I put like a cup of green onions um, and I saute a little bit. And then I add my two cups of rice and three to three and a half cups of water. And I set that to about to 11 minutes, but this depends on what kind of rice you look, you're cooking. So you want to look at the Instant Pot manual. Um, I like to add saffron, uh, turmeric, smoked paprika, oregano, whatever spice you like, okay? And um, you would not believe how delicious this rice is when you open it and the rice and the veggies are all mixed and cooked. Oh, and my mouth is watering already. The split pea soup is another one that is very easy to make. Um, I uh, almost make it, the other day I made it and I didn't even look at any recipe or anything. I just um, need about eight cups of water. And um, let's see, you always need to have onion, like one onion, a few stalks of celery would be good. Um, what else? Um, I like to add potatoes to it, like uh, usually two potatoes chunked. 
Um, what else? I'd like to put a couple of bay leaves if I have that. I like to put carrots, two carrots. Um, and if you like it, you could add like half cup of baby lima uh, beans um, or forget, about, make it easier. Just put um, like a cup and a half of the uh, split peas, uh, green split peas, um, like a cup and a half for about eight cups of water. And um, you place that in the instant pot. Let's see what, it, I mean, this one, I, uh, I usually made it on the regular stove. And so it takes about uh, 45 minutes to cook. You just have to keep stirring and see it, uh, how if the, if the uh, uh, split peas are, are cooked. Uh, in the instant pot, it may take, um, I doubt it that it takes more than 10 minutes, okay? And um, there is a wonderful lentil stew. I just refer you to um, Shada's website. Shada and I are, are writing a book together and uh, um, she has some of the most wonderful, easy recipes in her on her website. And um, the green bowl, what is a green bowl? Well, it's something that I made the other day and um, with again with with what i had and so let me see if i wrote it down here yeah so i had brussels sprouts and i had zucchini and green beans um and that was it i basically i steamed those three things the brussels sprouts zucchini and green beans and um i added lemon juice and uh, pepper and balsamic vinegar and a little bit of a nutritional yeast. That was my green bowl. It was wonderful. What about snacks? Well, the roasted sweet potatoes with cinnamon to me is the best. Um, the antioxidant bowl is another thing that I came up with the other day. And um, basically what it is, is chopped celery, small, chopped green apples and blueberries. And uh, you can even even put some um, um, lime juice on that. It, it's really delicious. Another thing is the oil-free hummus and um, that you can use to dip fresh veggies or fruit salad. So those are really good snacks. All right, I've given you a lot of <laughs> ideas here and I talk too much. So I'm going to open you can either type questions in the chat here because I can see the chat and um, uh, or you can turn on your camera and your microphone or just the microphone if you don't want to be seen and please ask me any questions that you want to ask in Hi. For like five minutes. Yes. Hi there. Hello. Yes. Gustavo, I got down to 110 pounds and I'm happy there. Uh, I'm wondering if I can go on this um, regimen because I, I need time <laughs> and I'm alone and I, I, uh, I don't like to cook, you know, that much. It just takes too much time. Can, can I maintain on this kind of procedure? If you can maintain your weight. Uh, if I can maintain my weight and um, just, you know, can I just eat like this all the time now? You can. Of course you can. Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then you can, you can, uh, it's, it's always a learning process for all of us. You know, don't weigh yourself every day. That's another thing we, we talk in the, in the program that I run. Uh, maybe weigh once a week or once a month. And if you see the weight going up, um, you know, you will adjust things. You will learn. Maybe, maybe you will do an all veggie day one day. Um, or maybe you will do a day of fasting. But um, definitely with this, with what I described here, where we use 
no salt or very little salt. This varies according to each person, okay? So I can't go. Um, that's why sometimes I do one-on-one -on -one coaching because we can't say that everything applies to everyone. But um, uh, we want to try to avoid salt and sugar because those are processed um, foods, the same as caffeine and alcohol. Uh, what were the three in greens used in your green bowl? Uh, in the green bowl, I use Brussels sprouts, um, zucchini, and green beans. That's what I used. Okay. Uh, one of you is asking about, yes, there are some places where you can find oil-free hummus, but really it is so easy to make your own. If you don't want to cook your chickpeas, you just buy a can or two. I always do one can it's always equals a cup and a half. So I don't use cans, you, um, but so for me, I would put three cups of chickpeas, make sure they're cooked really well so that it can be creamy. And then you um, add, you put that in a food processor, two cans of, two cans of um, the chickpeas. You will put um, two or three tablespoons of, um, of lemon juice, you will put like a teaspoon or half a teaspoon of cumin. I mean, that is a traditional ingredient and uh, you will need some water also and you will start uh, processing that. Some people add um, also like a can of cannellini beans because these are the white beans that may even can make it even creamier, okay? Uh, some people like to add garlic powder, and actually I do many times, but really the hummus is very easy to make. And then uh, you process it until it's very creamy, and there you have the oil-free um, hummus. Okay, uh, let's see if I see. Anybody else wants to um, ask anything? I'm here for any questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. Uh, in the next program that it lasts seven days, uh, we will start on September 4th and uh, we will do all these recipes. And I have an excitement announcement, which is that Dr. Lyle will be speaking with us because so much of this is here and it's mental. And there's so many questions that come up that um, if you want to, if you want me to send you a link, uh, send me an email and I send you a link. I really dislike sweet potatoes. <laughs> well, I don't know if you have tried the Hana sweet potatoes. I don't know if, if there is anybody who would not like that because it's like eating a piece of cake to me. It, they, it tastes so creamy. And it's so sweet and it has this vanilla flavor to them. And you have to um, roast your sweet potatoes whole. Don't cut them. Put them in the oven for a good hour at about 325 or so and uh, poke them. Make sure they're very soft so that they release all that sugar. Um, sprinkling uh, cinnamon is good. Slicing um, bananas and making like a sweet potato sandwich is good. You make, you know, you have a sweet potato slice, you put some uh, banana slices here and you put another one and you eat it like a sandwich. There is a new um, sweet potato cup that I'm going to share. I, I'm, I don't know yet exactly, so I don't want to tell you because I'm testing it, but I'm going to be adding that to the list of of ideas for the next program. So there are ways to um, eat sweet potatoes. Uh, another way is to put them in the soups, like I mentioned earlier, where you where it's combined with other things and then it's processed and so you're eating it that way. There's also ways to make muffins with sweet potatoes and bananas and you can eat them that way. Um, it's strange that Hana sweet potato came out dry. And so maybe 
uh, it may be that it needed a longer cooking time. I like the Hana sweet potatoes and I like the regular yams, the orange one, because it's so moist and creamy. Um, I don't use the instant pot um, to steam my sweet potatoes, not because of any reason. I just, I don't, I might try it one day, but I love to roast them. It's just that I roast them for a long time. Sometimes they're there for like an hour and a half if they're big. And so um, uh, they, they just taste wonderful to me. Um, the purple sweet potatoes are great. It's just that they're not available everywhere. I can't find them here in where I'm right now. So, um, but I do like to, 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 to switch them. So sometimes the purple, sometimes the Hawaiian, sometimes the Japanese, you know, sometimes the henna, sometimes the regular, um, any until you find the, the, the texture, the consistency that you like. See Donna's question about mushrooms. Okay, let's see if I can find Donna's question. Uh, what can I use as a substitute for mushrooms? Not many things, unfortunately. Um, uh, maybe eggplant. Um, it depends how you cook them. And I have given mushrooms to people who told me that they don't like them and they were chopped so small or they were embedded in like those old growths. It's so creamy um, and there's so much flavor to it that it's really hard to tell sometimes. But if you don't like them, just leave them out. It's, uh, there's no point. There's, there are so many veggies, um, but I really don't know. Mushrooms have such distinct flavor that I've never been able to find quite a good substitute. If any of you have any ideas, please type or say it out loud. You mentioned nutritional yeast in a recipe. I am sensitive to it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, nutritional yeast don't, it's not necess totally necessary. It's just that Number one, it adds some uh, creaminess to whatever you're making. Number two, it does have that cheesy flavor to it. Um, I wouldn't worry. Just leave it out. Don't use it. There's no point. Sometimes, sometimes in nutrition, sometimes the um, um, smoked paprika, because Smoked paprika is may is used to make some of these cheeses that that are really good that are made with potatoes, um, and it's usually is the the potato with the smoked paprika and some onion and garlic powder and other ingredients, and sometimes that tastes cheesy, but um, that's about all I can say about nutritional yeast. Not like you said, not everybody can take it. Some people are sensitive to it. Anything else? Please feel free. I'm here for you today. At, at Trader Joe's, they sell something that is called cruciferous crunch and it comes in a bag. But if you don't have a Trader Joe's, don't worry. You know what it is? Cruciferous crunch is chopped kale, Russell sprouts, broccoli and then green and red cabbage five things it's all sliced or chopped it's a wonderful mixture i don't i can't i don't have a trader joe's here so i make my own and um you put as much of each ingredient as you want there is no recipe for this and um, you steam it uh, if you have an instant pot with half a cup of water or in a, in a regular steamer and that is a great um, thing to put, let's say, on the oat groats. You can actually make savory oats with that mixture. You put it on top with some spices, uh, or you can eat it on the side, like I've done many times with my mashed potatoes. So that's something that I uh, forgot to mention. What do you uh, add to flavor your mashed potatoes? Oh, I 
have a secret ingredient that I learned from my grandmother. And that is a pinch of nutmeg. It sounds strange, but um, on the mashed potatoes, I put um, some um, onion powder and garlic powder. Believe it or not, a little bit of turmeric, for some reason, the turmeric makes it creamier. I don't know why, but I think it does. So when I say a little, I mean like an eighth of a teaspoon um, and, and an eighth or less of nutmeg. So, and then the onion and the garlic powder, I, I, that is something that I really like to, to flavor them. Do you recommend a certain B12? Um, the best answer is the one that Dr. McDougall has. Um, he lately, he made a new video where he is giving you more research and options. So I will just say, go to drmcdougall.com and type on the little search there, B12, and you'll see his latest video. Um, there are different kinds. And so he suggests that you, um, that you combine them. So one month or or until your bottle is, is gone, you try, or you buy two or three different kinds and one week you take one, one week you take another and you kind of rotate them. Okay, well, I will send you a little description of the, my next seven day detox and reset program. Um, I don't like to um, brag about myself, but I have to say, Number one, I'm a really good teacher. I was born a teacher. I love to teach. And um, I had a blast doing this. I do the seven day, the week program by myself. I've been doing it, but then I decided why not do it with others? And so that idea occurred to me and we had a blast. So many of you finally found an answer and a way to do this um, during that week. And I, and I hope that you will consider joining me for the next one. I, we also talk about what to do afterwards so you can stay uh, on track. And so I'll send you some info if you're interested with questions, uh, email me back. And I hope that I'll see you then. And if you live in the North Carolina, Charlotte area, or in the Dallas area in Texas, that's when my next live concerts will be uh, coming in November and early December. So if you want to go see me in person, email me and I'll let you know the details. Okay, that's enough from now. Bye-bye, everyone. See you later. <laughs>